Hi there, my name is Dylan and I'm going to be teaching you some lab techniques today. So today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be making competent E. coli cells. Uh, competent E. coli are uh, E. coli that can be transformed uh, by adding foreign DNA to them. Um, one of my previous videos was on transformation. Um, it's down here. Uh, you can check that out if you'd like. Um, so competent cells uh, take up foreign DNA the measure of how well they take up their DNA, that foreign DNA, is referred to as their competency. So uh, super competent cells will take up uh, foreign DNA very well, um, and competent cells will take up DNA, but not quite as well as the super competent. Um, we are going to make these in-house. You can buy them from almost any biological vendor. However, we make them in-house for two reasons. One, they're very cheap to make. And two, we can actually make competent cells with our integrated plasmids in them rather than having to get competent cells, transform them with our uh, plasmid or both plasmids uh, later on down the way. So let's get started, shall we? So making competent cells is a three day long protocol. Um, I'm bringing you in on day two. All we've done uh, yesterday was to actually streak the cell line that we want onto a plate, let that grow overnight. Now on day two, um, it's there's not much work. The majority of the work happens on day three, but on day two, what you need to do is you need to make up your modified LB, your buffer TF2, and your buffer TF1. Uh, I've included the recipes for these uh, in the description. You wanna make up 300 mLs of the buffer TF1. Um, you can make as little as uh, 10 mLs of the TF2, but I prefer to make it in 100 mLs, um, just generally because I'm making more than one uh, line of competent cells at a time, and it's just a little bit easier for your measurements to uh, make it in 100 mLs. Um, you're going to want to autoclave, autoclave to sterilize your LB, you're going to want to filter sterilize your TF1 and your TF2, and you're going to stick all those in the fridge overnight. Okay, so here's all that actually happens in day two. You have a 10 ml um, of your modified LB, and you have your plate with your cells that you're going to try to make competent over here. All you're going to do, you're going to take one of your inoculation loops and grab a colony. All you need is one, remember. So just grab a nice colony there. You're then going to add it to your 10 mLs of your modified LB. Put your cap back on. Um, now this is once again using a 10 mL culture tube. Um, but you can grow it uh, in a flask, really anything that you can put it in. A 10 mL culture, that's all you need. Doesn't matter what you grow it in. Um, and then you're gonna put that at 37 degrees with shaking uh, overnight. And we'll begin again tomorrow morning. Hey. Welcome back to day three of uh, making competent E. coli cells. So we've had our cells in the incubator overnight, and they've gotten we've gotten a nice dense culture growing, 10 mLs. So let's get started with day three. Okay, so for day three, we need our 10 mL culture, we need our 500 mLs of LB, and we need our one liter flask to start. Um, I'm using one with the bevels. Um, or the baffles, sorry, they they just grow cells faster, so it's easier for me because we're trying to get a large amount of cells. Um, so we're going to be uh, keeping an eye on cell growth using uh, optical density at 550 nanometers. So the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our LB, put a few mLs in a cuvette, just like so and just pop that in to our optical density meter and record it as a blank. Just do this now it will save you lots of time later. Lots of headaches. Okay, so we've measured the blank. We have our autoclave one liter flask. Just take the foil off the top. Add our LB to the flask. Thank you. 
easy as pie. And then we're going to add our cell culture. Now you can um, agitate this before you pour it, but really all you got to do is pour. Bam! Take our label from our culture tube. Pop that onto our flask just so everybody knows exactly what we're growing here. Put the foil back on it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to stick this at 37 degrees with shaking. Um, and I'll show you how to collect and measure optical density from that as we're growing it. Okay, so at this point our culture has been growing for about an hour and a half. And we're just going to measure the OD on it. Keep track of the cell growth. So what we do is we take a cuvette. A pipetter, reach down in, grab a little bit of the suspension, fill up our cuvette, and take a read. So right now it's at 0 0.06, so it's still pretty low density. So we're going to keep growing it. Okay, so it's been about three and a half hours. I just took the OD and we're at 0.47. Uh, you want to get to about 0.5 without going over, so I'm going to say 0.47 is a good OD for us to have. So now what you're going to do is you're going to put your cell suspension on ice, like so, for 10 minutes. Once your suspension has been cooled for 10 minutes on ice, you're going to take it out and then you're going to spin it down. So put it into a centrifuge bottle and you're going to want to spin it uh, for 5 minutes at 3000 RPMs. Okay, so we've spun this down and poured off the supernatant. And if you can see, um, there's this nice layer of cells here on the bottom of the bottle. So what we're going to do is resuspend those in our 300 mLs of the TF1 buffer. So all we're going to do is we're going to pour that in. You want to do this gently. So just pour it in gently. And then you want to just resuspend. And to do that I find really the best way is to just use a pipetter like so. Um, and you're just going to pipe that up and down, just sort of resuspending the uh, cells into the solution as you pipette them. So by gently, um, I mean no vortexing, no shaking, None of that stuff. Just a nice and easy pipetting up and down. So once you've resuspended your suspension, um, then you're going to spin that down once again, 3000 RPMs for five minutes. So once we've spun down those, uh, we're going to resuspend in 10 mLs of our TF2 buffer. Once again, very gently. So just pipetting up and down. Very slow and easy. Getting rid of any of the chunks that we might be finding in the cell suspension. And we'll end up with a very uh, dense, almost opaque solution in our TF2. So we're just going to add that all to the centrifuge tube. Like 
like so. And seal that up. And while that, we're going to put that on ice for 15 minutes. While that is happening, we're also going to go and pick up liquid nitrogen for our next step. Okay, so it's been 15 minutes. We've got this nice, beautiful uh, cell suspension here in the TF2. So what you're going to want to do is keep that on ice and rack up your tubes for ready aliquoting. And we're going to be snap freezing these. So I find the best way to do that with this um, is you got your dew of liquid nitrogen. Just take an ice bucket, pour your liquid nitrogen into the ice bucket. Put the lid on the ice bucket, set it to the side. I find this works really well <clears throat> because it gives you a larger area to put your aliquots into and it makes getting them out when you're done a lot easier. So I like to use 100 uh, microliter aliquots. So I'll just agitate my cell suspension, put it on ice, and load up a few aliquots. So I, I'm only loading up a few right now because I don't want the cells to get too warm before I flash or I snap freeze them. So I generally load up eight at a time, which is quite handy because there are eight two or eight uh, slots per row in this tube rack that I'm using. So I've loaded up this first one. Just cap these off. Bring our tub of liquid nitrogen back over. And just pop those in to snap freeze. And we'll just keep those in there uh, for now. Okay, so we've aliquoted out all of our uh, cells. We've got 100 aliquots here floating around in liquid nitrogen, all snap frozen, very nice. So now what you want to do, you want to get a freezer box, label it with the type of cells and when they were made. When they were made is very important because uh, cells made competent like this uh, tend to start losing their competency after about six months in the freezer at minus 80. So, label your box, get that all good to go. Then take an empty ice bucket, pour off the liquid nitrogen into the ice bucket. just all your aliquots here at the bottom of this bucket. Don't even have to touch them. Open up your box. Pour them into the box. And put them at minus 80. And you're done with this part of your pro. Okay, so you're actually done making the competent cells at this point, but they're not ready to be used. Uh, what you have to do before you're ready to use them is determine their competency and to do that you need to transform them with a test plasmid. This test plasmid can really be anything that you know transforms well into that particular cell line. Um, there's a video that I'm going to link to that is that I did uh, showing you how to do a transformation so you can go there and check that out. I am now going to transform these cells that I just made. Um, the rest of them can be stored at minus 80 like I said for six months. Uh, after that, they start to lose their competency. So, with that, good luck. Happy sciencing. I'm going to go transform these cells, see if they're any good. Bye.